What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I have a 2010 Silverado with a 6.6 liter Duramax in it and uh, I've developed a little bit of an overheating problem. Now this is a, uh, a really big thread on uh, a lot of the diesel sites that I'm on between like Facebook and Instagram, all that kind of stuff. So uh, make sure you pay attention if you have a lot of these symptoms. Most likely this is what's going on. So here's what's going on. My truck overheats when I'm pulling a big load. Typically I have an 18 foot gooseneck with a three and a half foot dovetail. It's a triaxle trailer. When I pull that trailer with stuff on there, my truck starts to overheat in the winter or in the summertime. In the wintertime, it works perfectly fine. Pulling nothing works perfectly fine, never overheats. So usually what happens is, is your radiator gets clogged or your intercooler gets clogged and your AC coils get clogged and those all need air to go through it. So What's happening is, is that it's working just fine. It's getting enough air by itself when it's driving by itself, but it's not getting enough air when it really, really needs it, when it needs to work hard. So, so let's go, Brandon. I'll take you guys for a ride and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So it's about 89 degrees. And as you can see, we're pulling about 8,000 pounds, probably a three or 4,000 pound trailer. Um, we're going upgrade right now, but she's getting a little bit warm. And as you can see in the gauge here, she's a little bit off the number operating temperature. So we're gonna change that radiator, or clean out the radiator, and see how that does. And that's no good. So uh, when I actually put the camera down, I went up another hill, went up to about 245, 250. It's it pretty scary. So I actually pulled off this side, got lunch. We filled up the truck just to let her to cool down itself. So uh, that's what's going on. It's just simply not getting enough airflow when it needs the power. It's gonna generate a lot more heat and it needs to cool itself off a little bit better. If you're not getting the airflow, then unfortunately it's not gonna cool down as well. That's why I'm not seeing the problem when I'm just driving by myself. Let's get started. I'll show you guys what we're gonna do. All right, first what we're gonna do is we're gonna drain the coolant so while it's draining, we can get everything else out of the way. But we gotta get this inner fender wall out on this side and on the other side. Seven millimeter bolts all the way around up top. There is a 13 millimeter bolt down here holding it on. If you have factory mud flaps, I don't have them on right now, so I don't have to remove that bolt. The rest are just the standard little pop clips. See, so I got one right here. Just use a flathead screwdriver, just push it in there, pull them right out, and you should be all squared away. So I'm gonna get this out here real quick, show you how to drain this thing. All right, next, I'm gonna take this cap off here. Just to take the pressure off. I'm gonna set that on there so we don't get anything in there. Uh, then, next, we're going to pop that clip off right here, and then it should start draining all of the coolant. I wish they had an actual drain on the radiator like most vehicles, but unfortunately GM did not throw that in there for us, so we'll take that off and we should start draining it. Alright, so I'm going to take this thing off. Uh, it's pretty simple, it's just got two clips right there, and then that hole here on the left uh, just holds that wire harness in there. That way it's not spilling all over. All right, and this clip just pops right out. These little pick tools are pretty nice. Don't lose this. All right, while that's draining, I'm gonna take the intake off. These bolts right here, 7 16ths, just come right out. Um, if you have an aftermarket one, most likely you have one of these. That's 12 millimeter down there, whole thing comes right out. If you have the factory one, uh, it'll be a 7 16 up here as well. And this whole thing will maneuver out. You'll have to pull up the air dam out of here and it should just come right out. So we'll get that out here real quick. And then pull out your sensor out of your intake real quick. Comes out nice and easy. You just push this thing down, pulls it right out. Sometimes you gotta wiggle it. All right, I can't believe that's still draining. I had to switch out the pails, but I already don't have enough coolant, so I'll run and go get some more. But either way, we'll keep moving on while that's draining. Next, we're gonna take this whole thing out right here. Uh, and this is for the factory air box. Uh, there's one, two, three, four 10 millimeter bolts there. There is a 10 millimeter bolt right there. There's this black clip we gotta pull out because this comes out in two sections. I think we can just take the bottom part out, but I'm gonna take both of them out just for ease of this video. And then when we come down here, we got 
one bolt there another one up there and this whole thing should pop right out so we'll pull that out real quick don't mind the mess i have not mounted these yet since we put the new headlights in a while back ago so i'll get that out and keep going on all right next we gotta get all this stuff out of the way so 7 16 to pull this all out and on your intercooler you got a clip right here just a flathead or a pick you can clip this thing out it's just like the radiator one just a little bit bigger if you have the uh, factory uh, EGR system <clears throat> you'll have another clip just like this but it'll be up here connected to your EGR we'll pull all those out and looking at the room I think just for ease of this video to get everything out so you guys can see this I think I'm gonna pull the whole charge pipe off too Don't lose this one either. Looks like a hard one to find. All right, now that that is all out, looking pretty good got a lot of area over there we got a lot of area over here let's pull this out real quick and then we'll get that fan trout out and then we'll start disconnecting the radiator and the intercooler from this side so let's pop this out these are nice and easy just put your screwdriver in there pop it out put it underneath here pop out the whole clip and this thing comes right out all right next I think I'm actually going to take the grill out that way to make it a little bit easier and everything um, this aftermarket grill is a little bit different than the factory one they all are going to have 10 millimeter bolts one two three and four the factory one has a bunch of clips i'll have to have a clip here clip down here clip over there same thing on the other side over here this one just has four on the bottom so i'm gonna pop that out real quick and move on all right next we're going to take this beast off nice and simple all you got to do is disconnect this sensor here. Uh, we'll take out the temperature sensor right off of the, of, of the support itself. And then we have one, two, three. There's one behind here. Four, uh, five, six, seven, eight, ten millimeter bolts. We'll pop that whole thing off. Before we take that all off, we're going to take these three ten millimeter bolts out so this thing can just sit there and hang and it won't be disconnected or it won't be connected. This is nice and simple to take out. All you gotta do is just push this pin right here. Connector comes apart. All right, next we're gonna take the fan trout out. We got a couple things to get out of the way. Number one, we gotta get the uh, upper coolant codes out and we gotta get your TCM out. So this is pretty easy. A pair of pliers, pop this thing right off. A funny thing about this, um, I'm surprised people didn't notice, but this is the wire that I have that goes to my switch for my EFI Live. And when I routed it, I was doing the videoing, and I put it in there and I accidentally wrapped it around this. So this has been chilling in there for a long time. We'll hide this wire and make it look nice and pretty now that this is out of the way. So next we'll take the TCM out. All right, next we've got to pull the TCM out. There's a clip here, here. And over here on this side, the pop clips, you just stick the screwdriver in there, pop them right out. I only have one in there, so pull this out, we'll just move it to the side. Our next, we're going to get this fan shot out. So we got two clips on each side. Uh, one right here, the other one right there. Same deal on the other side. One right there, and one right there. We got a 13 millimeter bolt here, a 13 millimeter bolt here, and one here. And this whole thing should just pop right out, so let's take that out. Next, we're going to pop up the pop off the hot side intercooler pipe, a 7 16 nut, pull that off, pull that out. Um, we're almost ready to pull this radiator. Next, we're going to take this off right here. Should be pretty simple. Pull that off. We'll set that to the side. And then next, let's get these transmission clips. All right, next we're gonna pull the trans lines. We got one here, and we got one all the way down here. Uh, these are pretty simple to do. You just wanna be very careful because a, a coolant running through there uh, for your trans. Just a simple pick, we'll pop these right out as well. All 
Don't lose this either. All right, pop these out nice and easy. Like I said, you want to be careful with popping those out. So we'll be careful when we pull this out. We don't need to move it all out. If you do get a little bit of cooling air, that's not a problem. The internal radiator for the trans uh, may sink back into your tran or into your radiator itself a little bit. As long as you keep these fittings in, you should be fine. If you see a little coolant leak out of there, no problems. So all we got to do is unbolt this thing, pull it out. All right, now let's get the bolts off, get this radiator out. We have one bolt right here. We got one bolt, take it all the way down here. We got one bolt right there. <clears throat> On the other side, we got a bolt right here, just by the battery. And then we got another bolt right up here, right there, right above the actual the intercooler where the boot comes in. Those are a 13 millimeter. We'll pull those out and then theoretically, I believe we have everything out, we should be able to pull this radiator out. Perfect. Nice and loose. I like it. Please comment below. Does anybody have a cut right here? This looks like somebody physically cut it. It looks like it's only on the support itself, but and not affecting any of the coolant, but it's kind of weird, but I almost forgot one, a couple things, or two things, I mean. This bottom shroud has to pop out of that clip right there. Same with the one over here on this side. Otherwise, the bottom shroud isn't gonna allow you to pull it out. So let's get this thing out of the truck. All right, before we take this out, let's pause and talk for one second here. Here's our trans cooler. And it looks like I got something hit that, which isn't too big of a deal. It actually looks fairly clean. That's probably why when I'm going down the road and the truck's overheating, the trans isn't. I mean, it's getting warm, but it, it's not too bad. The black radiator here, let me zoom out. The black radiator here, that is your AC condenser radiator. So I'm just gonna move that a little bit out of the way when I clean everything all out. But as you can see, that's starting to get a little bit clogged here. Next one. The silver one here is your intercooler. Once that starts getting clogged and you can see that I'm getting some fins there. I got some nice pretty bugs over here, you know, riddling it with that. Now I cleaned this two years ago. Last one, final, and as you can see that I'm cracked, it's pretty plugged right here, right where the fans pull and everything out. That's your radiator for the truck, where all the coolant is. So you need air to go through every single one of these to cool your truck off. So that's why I'm pulling this thing out. We're gonna get this thing actually out. We're going to actually inspect it, make sure we don't have any leaks. I don't think we do. We're going to clean it all out. Um, but like I said, it's got to pull all the air right through there. And that's why it's getting clogged. It's not getting enough airflow. When I'm driving down the road, just fine. Nothing pulling, nothing, nothing heavy. We're doing great. Start pulling the big boy trailer. That's when we're overheating. So let's get this out. All right, here is our radiator. That is clogged, look at that, right dead center. That's where the fan goes. I do not know, that is worrisome. That is a lot of road dime or dirt. That's an actual leaf, so that wasn't cooling anything. Um, so we're gonna clean this all. I got that, that sprayer that we're gonna put in here, kinda let it sit for a minute and clean out. If I zoom in, I mean, I don't know if the camera can actually pick this up, but. Uh, we can't even see through it like that's pretty bad perfect i'm gonna try to get this unit cooler out i believe looking at this thing 10 millimeter bolt 10 millimeter bolt and a little bit of finagging because it's a little bit wider than the radiator i think this whole thing will just pull right out and then we can clean the ac which i'm not having an issue with if you're sitting at an intersection, your AC starts warming up and it's not as cold. Very, very good sign that this thing is freezing. Or, I'm sorry, uh, clogged. We'll disconnect that. We'll be able to clean the AC out. And uh, we'll see if we get this radiator out here. Take those two bolts out. All right. My mistake. These 10 millimeter bolts actually hold the AC unit in. So all we got to do is pull it out, lift it up. I'll do that here in a minute to move it out of the way. The bolts that actually take that out are these bad boys right here. 
13 and we'll move over to the other side number 13 so pull those out now the intercooler should come out all right trying to get this out ac lines completely wrecked me because i can't get it out there it's blocked right here i gotta get it around or i gotta take my ecm out which i'm not going to do so we're gonna move the ac out we're gonna move it over move it over just enough and out a little bit so all these lines will move okay i still can't get this out with this thing here so this is what we're going to do we're going to take the belt off here we're going to disconnect the ac unit one two three and four uh, 15 millimeter bolts we're going to pull this off this side it's going to give us all kinds of room here things going to come right out we won't have to move that at all should be nice and easy let's try it all right success that's what it feels like feels pretty good this one doesn't look to be too blocked but you definitely can't see through the whole thing and you definitely should be able to so i don't know what this is this is kind of concerning because this was also on the radiator it kind of feels like a leak maybe it's just road grind down at the bottom but moving the ac unit just a little bit out of the way so i can move it out so it wasn't hitting any of that stuff we got her all out so let's clean everything all right guys now we're going to spray this stuff on there. You want to set it, let it to set for about five minutes roughly just to make sure it kind of works itself into it. I use this stuff. Uh, it works really, really well. I put it on my AC for the house as well once a year. I pull the fins off, or not the fins off, but I pull the, the casing off. Spray all the fins and spray them all out. I Like I said before, I'm going to be using this stuff because I want to see if this will be pretty efficient using just a garden hose. I know not a lot, not a lot of people have access to a power washer which would clean these really well. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, if this stuff really works really well on this, then we should be able to get everything all packed out, cleaned up, put it back in the truck. So I'll leave a link in the description uh, for this stuff. Like I said, I got it on Amazon. Good deal. Ships right to the house, a couple of days. So good deal. Let's spray it down. All right. Five minutes later, intercooler is sprayed and has been soaking for roughly five minutes. I don't know how long it is. I'm guessing at this point. I let it down, sprayed this whole thing so gravity could take the coil cleaner uh, all the way down. Best way to get all this stuff clean is to spray it from the same way. It's got to go out the same way that it came in. So uh, we're going to spray it from the back side and hope for the best. There we go. Nice and clean. So you guys hear the other side real quick. Here we go on the other side. Nice and clean. We'll throw this back in the truck after we clean the AC. All right. Time for the radiator. This actually looks pretty bad. I'm gonna spray it from both sides. Let it soak in from both sides before we clean it. So we'll get that one in there. We'll start putting this truck back together. So I did get the old radiator back in after I cleaned it. Uh, I did unfortunately forget to film it after I clean it, but it looks it looks really good. I ended up did having I did have to use the power washer. Unfortunately, uh, I tried to hit it with the hose. I just couldn't get it cleaned out enough. So I put a couple things back together, but not too big a deal. So we'll get this thing all back in. I'm sorry, back together. We'll, we'll fill it back up with coolant and we'll move on from there and see how she does. All right, guys, I'm going to show you a trick with these things. If you put it in right now, let's see if I can get this thing in there. Just like it's supposed to be. These lines will just slide right in, clip into place. Boom, nice and good. So I'll get that bottom one and we'll move on. All right, guys, put this lower radiator on the hose on make sure you pregame it as well make sure it's fully seated and you should be able to throw it right on there is a little notch right here with that matches the notch on the radiator itself make sure that's straight clip into place that thing's not going anywhere perfect 
Let's get the air in now. All right, now for this, same deal. Just pregame it, and uh, you get it in there. It'll be nice and easy. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. Maybe. There we go. Perfect. I did notice if you start right here where there's a notch, there's three of them around this whole thing. Put the open ends in there. It lines up pretty well. So I'll feed this into the top and we'll clip it in. All right, everything is all set. Time to pour it in. I believe, just looking at my pails here, I believe that I took out about three gallons that came out, and I plan on putting putting new coolant in uh, when I did this. So, by desk cool only, 50-50 mix. You don't have to do anything, just pour it right in. Here bubbling, that's everything coming out. So I'll fill it the rest of the way. I think I need another gallon, so I'll have to run to the store, which isn't too big of a deal, but we'll put that second one in. We'll fire up the truck, we'll check for leaks, see if it starts bubbling out and we'll add accordingly. All right, so I've been driving for about a half hour now and my temperatures are looking real, really good. Zoom in a little bit so you guys can see that. But they're looking really good, probably about maybe 15, 20 degrees cooler driving for a half hour and I haven't even reached 210 yet on the gauge so uh, trans temps haven't really changed I didn't really think so I cleaned that cooler last year which is you know 20 degrees or I'm sorry 80 degrees over ambient temperature you want to stay within 100 for that one but this I'm pretty excited about that is that has gone down considerably I've put in four gallons of coolant so far and I'm still low I'm high enough to where the sensor isn't reaching it but we we seem to be pretty good. I'm gonna drive it for a little bit longer and and see how far we are as, as far as the coolant level. So, but it's looking probably it's gonna be about four gallons, maybe a little bit more. All right, now that we made this turn here, I'm gonna get on it because why not? <laughs> the truck's been driving for a while, and uh, we want to make sure that we got everything all leaking. So. super crazy until you can see that your temperatures are not spiking a lot. Mine are still spiking so I can see that I still have a lot of air in the system. Alright, here we are next day. I added about another half a gallon of coolant. So far I've, I've done about four and a half gallons, maybe just a little bit more. And uh, temperatures seem to be pretty good. I don't know if this is the correct way to purge it or not, but it seems to be the best way that I have found. I uh, did this when I did my EGR deletes. I just topped everything all off, let all the air cool out, and uh, uh, or the air bubble out, and then I just kept adding coolant as I drove the truck. I have a coolant, uh, gallon of coolant behind me in the truck, so in case you know it gets low or whatever, but we seem to be pretty good. I'm gonna put it to the floor here real quick. rose a little bit which it should um, it shouldn't spike super high uh, we'll give it a couple minutes here and we'll see if it goes back down trans is still pretty low which is really nice uh, I know it's a little bit cooler today than it was the day that I started doing this but we seem pretty good we got it to 174 and she's already climbing down already too I also have a trailer behind me it's not a heavy one it's only 1800 pounds but I'm gonna pick up some scrap today and see how she does Alright, now 
I know we got some good weight in there. So we're sitting at 188. We've been sitting between that, between that, and uh, 186 for the last like two miles. And uh, you can see my fuel economy is just plummeted. It's just completely cut in half. So I don't know how much these things weigh. They're they're fairly heavy, but we'll we'll check out the scrapyard and see how much they actually are. But uh, no, our, our our temperatures are looking pretty good. Trans is staying nice and true at 80 degrees above ambient temperature. So good deal. Let's run through that scrapyard and see how much weight we're pulling. All right, now that we're back in the truck and on the way home, nothing in the trailer. Temps are looking really nice. Back to the good fuel economy. Uh, that weight was 1,380 pounds. So I had almost 3,600 pounds just between the trailer and the weight that I had in there. So pretty happy. Heavily suggest doing that. And it is a common thread on a lot of forums that I see. When summertime hits, uh, people's trucks start overheating a little bit. Nothing too big to be concerned of. And then when they start pulling trailers or big weights, start throwing your AC on, um, which is going to throw a little more stress on your motor. Uh, and your thing starts starts overheating a little bit. Uh, mine got up to about 240 one day, and that was that was pretty scary. I was I was pulling my gooseneck uh, with 11 dispensers on it, uh, gas pumps, if you will, and uh, that was uh, that was that was not good. <laughs> I had to pull over and let that thing let that thing cool off. But either way, I'm gonna get out of here. I do have a small announcement. Well, it's actually kind of a big announcement. Hunter at Ejection Motorsports. He has uh, decided to get his U channel out there and start posting out more videos, more videos and be a little more fluent with it. Uh, and he is going to do a special giveaway when he hits a thousand subscribers. So make sure, I'll leave a link in the description, make sure you go and check out his YouTube channel. Uh, it is pretty awesome. He does a lot of cool things with a lot of different types of trucks, vehicles, UTVs, stuff like that. So I'll leave my link in the description for Instagram if you want to go and check that out. As always, please like this video. Uh, really helps me out, boosts this up. Actually, I think this is going to actually help out a lot of people in the long run. Uh, it's something that, you know, it's not something that you're going to just think of right away. And it is entailed. It took me about four and a half, maybe maybe closer to five gallons of coolant when I put it all back in there. I had no intentions of putting the old stuff back in. I wanted the coolant flush anyways. Uh, it took me the better half of a full Saturday and then the following day on a Sunday to get everything all out of the truck, clean and back in. Now, mind you, it does take a little bit longer when you're filming. Take that in mind. I would say probably start to finish, probably just block out the most part of the day and you should be all squared away back on the road. And with that being said, I'm gonna get out of here. I'll leave a link in the description for everything that I use, all the parts and all the tools and everything like I always do for all my videos. And I'll leave a link for everything else that I may or may or not have forget. And as we support Build Back Better with our diesel prices, Getting out of here. Deuces.